most businesses today face two major marketing challenges. One, people are overloaded by information. We're talking about four and a half billion pieces of new content every day. And two, people have much shorter attention spans and spend only about eight seconds on anything before they jump on to the next thing. It's no wonder that companies are struggling to get their message heard. The result of poor marketing communications is that half of all new business ventures fail in their first four years, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. With this in mind, Visual Storytelling Institute co-founders Shlomi Ron and Alex Caravallo asked themselves, how can businesses connect more powerfully with audiences? Welcome to Visual Storytelling Today. This is your number one source for the latest and most effective business marketing strategies you can apply today to rise above the noise. From video and infographics to augmented and virtual reality, join us every month to meet notable visual storytellers and discover their marketing insights and stories. Here's your host, Shlomi Ron. Hi everybody, my name is Shlomi Ron. I'm a co-founder at the Visual Storytelling Institute uh, based here in sunny Miami, Florida. I'm super excited to have today a good friend and a fantastic expert in the space of AR and VR, uh, Kathy Hackle. Uh, a, bit, a little bit about Kathy. Kathy is a market futurist, a VR AR speaker, evangelist, a consultant. She's also the co-chair of the VR AR Association Marketing Committee and one of the, the women leading the virtual and augmented content revolution. Hackle was also selected as a 2017 Oculus Launchpad Fellow, a program designed to support promising VR content creators. She has spoken about VR and social media in more than 10 countries and has been featured in media outlets like Mike, CNN, Entrepreneur, VentureBeat, and Mashable. Kathy was named by Onalytica as leading augmented reality influencer and also by NBC News as one of the top Latina women working in virtual reality. Wow, that's fantastic list. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Kathy. Thank you so much for having me. I know we've, we've been trying to get something on the calendar for a while, and I'm just happy that we made it work. Yeah. So thank you so much for having me. Very, very excited. No, we definitely always excited to speak uh, uh, with you, and especially in a very loaded uh, subject like AR and VR that a lot of marketers, uh, some of them are online right now in our audiences, uh, are grappling with. So we are super excited to, to have you today. Okay, so maybe if you can start uh, telling us a little bit how you get started in AR and VR, I'm sure it was not uh, your day one job. No, it was. I, I, I always say that I came to virtual reality and augmented reality um, by accident. So back in 2004, I was working at CNN, and part of my job there uh, was to look at the raw footage that was coming in from Iraq so we could tell the affiliates if there was sensitive material. So my job was partly to sit through beheadings, to sit through uh, bodies of soldiers being dragged through the streets of Iraq. So very graphic, gruesome content. Oh, wow. And yeah, and, and when you have that type of job where you're seeing these types of things all the time, you kind of um, switch your humanity switch off a little bit. You turn it mm -hmm. off just a little yep. bit, not coolly, obviously, yep. but you turn it off just a little bit. And, um, and it wasn't until I had my first real virtual reality experience that I didn't really fully turn it back on. So oh, wow. um, the story, yeah, the story behind that is I was at a conference and I had done some 360 video, but nothing like earth moving or shaking. Right. Uh, and, and I did um, confinement. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've done it from the, from the Guardian. So oh. confinement puts you in this, uh, the solitary confinement cell where prisoners in, in spend 90% of their time. Like that's 90% of your time. And uh, it's a pretty small cell. And when I was in there, I would say, you know, within two or three minutes possibly, uh -huh. I, I got completely claustrophobic and I had to take the headset off. Like it was just one of those ones. Where, like, I took the headset off and... And two things came through my mind. First of all, I was like, wow, this is, this is a very powerful storytelling tool. This is yep. one of the ways that we're going to tell stories in the future. Mm -hmm. And then the other mm -hmm. thing is like, it made me care. You know, it created mm -hmm. that empathy or compassion, whatever we want to call it. Um, mm -hmm. And I started to care about something I didn't even care about before. So I, I just wow. understood in my brain how powerful this, this tool was, this technology was. And, and I said, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I did a very hard pivot. It was like, 
I mean, I'll, everyone noticed when I did the pivot into VR and AR, so. Oh, wow. So, so, so what was the exact company where you first discovered this AR experience, VR experience? It's a VR experience. I was at a festival, um, oh. a journalism festival, a journalism oh, interactive see. festival. I can't remember what it was. Oh, um, I don't remember the name, uh, but they had different experiences. And oh, I see. Yeah, and it was my first real foray into, uh, into VR and AR content. Um, you know, like I said, I had done some 360 video, but it wasn't anything earth shattering. It wasn't until I really had a storytelling experience, a, 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 a virtual reality experience that had a, a narrative that Got I it. didn't really fully click in my mind. So it. it was it was like that day and from that day on forward, I was a completely different person. Uh, but I think that my days as a storyteller in journalism prepared me for what I'm doing right now. So Absolutely. Yeah. So and I. As part of uh, doing the research uh, for this show, I also understand that you were uh, part of the Oculus Launchpad uh, program. So maybe can you share more about that? I think this is fantastic. Maybe if you can give some uh, background uh, uh, to our audience about Oculus Rift. Yep. Uh, so definitely. So obviously Oculus is one of the premium, the premium headsets uh, that you can use when experiencing virtual reality. There's the HTC Vive, there's the Oculus Rift. Oculus was bought by Facebook um, a couple of years ago. I think it's for $3 billion. Yep. I think that's the number that we finally found out. It's $3 billion. Uh, and it's an amazing headset. But they also, uh, with an Oculus, uh, they used to have Oculus Story Studio, which produced content. They no longer have it. Got it. Uh, but one of, their, uh, one of the missions and one of the people there leading this, this uh, revolution in content, let's say, is called Ebony. Uh, Ebony, P P I can't pronounce her name. Peony. Um, mm -hmm. And she organized an event called Oculus Launchpad. So the first one, the first cohort was in 2016. Second cohort, 2017. That's where that's where I'm a, a part of that cohort. And the whole idea behind Oculus Launchpad is to give an opportunity to up and coming uh, virtual reality content creators of diverse backgrounds. So to give those people an opportunity. Um, to, you know, to bring their content um, to the front, uh, mm -hmm. to, you know, to, to kind of like bring that content out and, and give us an opportunity. Um, so it was mostly, it was just beautiful. It was lots of women, lots of people of color, um, just a lot of that LGBTQ, just a lot of diverse voices uh, being part of this cohort uh, where you're actually competing. You know, at the end, you're actually competing for funding for projects. Uh, yes. But it was just a beautiful experience to, you know, be invited to Oculus's headquarters and, and, and go through this whole training that they put together for you. So um, for those of you, you guys that are listening or, or watching, uh, there's a studio called Felix and Paul. Do you, have you heard of it, Shlomi? No. Felix and Paul is based out of Canada, um, and they have done the, the, some of the best virtual reality content. I mean, these, if, if someone's going to win an Oscar for VR, <laughs> it's them for okay. actual VR content, you know, not 2D. Um, sure. it, fantastic! They did. Um, they did the the one with Obama in the White House. Uh, they did a whole bunch of things, and we actually got Paul from Felix and Paul to give us a a, a three sixty storytelling cinematography class. Um, so just you know the opportunity to be a part of this uh, yeah, of this that. cohort it was fantastic. So. Uh, it sounds like a, a very kind of front row experience to be part mm -hmm. of a one of the leading technologies and almost like an accelerator program it sounds like that, yeah that, that really allows you to uh, mentor others how to drive this so this is fantastic great yeah. so i just want to kind of peel this uh, huge onion yeah. <laughs> of uh, you know the subject of digital storytelling really start from the from the top so mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we do with the, all of our guests you know we this is kind of a regular question in, in our uh, show is what is your definition for visual storytelling? We know it's a, it's a, it's a new term and we're always interested in new perspectives. Okay. Well, um, it's really interesting because as I was preparing for this, um, can you hear me okay? Is the connection okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, as I was preparing for this, for this um, you know, interview, I was thinking about storytelling from the VR and AR perspective. Mm -hmm. And I think that we are in some way, shape or form uh, m m there's two things that I need to discuss. It's like the last screen. I lost an, I wrote an article that's on your blog and that's 
uh, about how we used to be told to sit really far away from the TV, right? right. We used to be like, you're too far, you're too close, sit back. Uh, but it seems that we keep getting closer to the screen. Like, you know, we're like super close. We're like right here on our phones. Yep. In some way, shape or form, VR and AR are that last screen that mm -hmm. is going to be on our eyes, whether it's a virtual reality headset or eventually some smart glasses. So I think that that, from a visual standpoint and a storytelling standpoint, really signals what's coming. Mm -hmm. So what's coming in this revolution of, uh, you know, of content, of that visual storytelling. And then within the idea of storytelling in VR and AR, mm -hmm. I am, I've been really thinking about this seriously, about how when you go into virtual reality, so to define the terms for folks that don't understand, uh, virtual reality, so augmented reality adds, uh, amplifies your world or enhances your world. It adds a digital element to your world. Mm -hmm. So like Pokemon Go, you know, or, or like the dancing, uh, dancing hot dog from Snapchat. Yep. Virtual reality really creates new worlds. So it's kind of a paradigm. There's two things going on. You can, you can uh, amplify your world or you can augment your world or you can create a new world. So from that standpoint, if you think about storytelling, in some way, shape or form, VR is story living. Right. I love to, that. Yep. Yeah. You're going into that story. <laughs> and then I was thinking about it even harder. And I was thinking from an AR perspective, in some way, shape, or form, it's story doing. Mm. I know this it sounds weird, but it's, it's that story doing where you're actually using your phone or your uh, smart glasses to use augmented reality for utility and context. That's one of my right. biggest, biggest things when, I, when it comes to augmented reality. So, and then if you want to get really meta and really deep into it, uh -huh. if you think about the VR story living, it's not just you living the story, but when we have virtual reality powered by, by artificial intelligence and we get to the point of reactive content, in some way, shape or form, that story is alive too. Right. So, you know, that's very like meta and very like in there, but... Um, if, if we look forward to, you know, what's going to come in some shape or form is that it's that, that shift in, that shift in content, exactly what you're talking about, that revolution in content. So, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I actually attended the, uh, obviously remotely the Facebook developer conference when they announced yeah. also their virtual reality initiative. And it sounds exactly like you described that, you know, on the higher end, you know, virtual reality, when you have multiple participants, in a digital uh, environment interacting together and having some you know physical a uh, reaction to, to touch and and also the, the view and the environment around them and and the environment constantly changing that's another i think important factor a lot of people forget is that uh, with the 360 video for example you know you kind of locked into 360 circle and you, you look around it's going to be the same circle no matter where you're going to look right yeah. but in vr the environment is constantly fluid it's actually mm -hmm. changing around you and you see other content as you said that uh, you can interact and, and kind of uh, tr activate different experiences so it's mm -hmm. not a motion a, like a motionless at all yeah. so yeah, that, so that's awesome. So one of the things that uh, obviously marketers uh, that are looking to get involved uh, before before we get deep into the process, can you talk a little bit about you know at least from what you see in the marketplace, what are, what are the challenges or the problems that kind of prevent marketers to kind of go full throttle with VR today? I think, you know, one of the things, there's several things that I'm seeing in the market. So one of them is maybe lack of understanding, mm -hmm. um, not so much from the creatives in the team, but maybe sometimes from the higher ups where they don't mm -hmm. really understand the difference. Uh, a friend of mine from um, the VRARA uh, marketing committee uh, shared a story with us, um, not relevant to their agency or anything, but something that they had heard. Uh, that they actually st were step they stepped in to solve this problem. Uh, there was a CEO that came to the, their agency and said, uh, I need a virtual reality campaign and gave them $500,000 for a campaign. Yeah. And when they came to show him the final product, they brought an HTC Vive. And he yeah. was like, what is that? I wanted that Pokemon Go thing. You know, oh, I wanted Pokemon. Yeah. So it's like that, that lack of understanding of what these the technologies are and the differences. I think yep. that that's one of the, I mean, and that from a very basic perspective. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that 
doing VR and AR, not just because of the, of the hype uh, yeah. is important. It has to make sense. It has mm -hmm. to make sense. And that's where storytelling comes in. Um, I've seen very strong storytelling from several brands. Mm -hmm. And it, if it makes sense, if it adds to your customer experience, if it adds to your brand story, mm -hmm. do it. You know, it amplifies the content. Um, but the problem is that there's a lot of bad content out there or a lot of content right. that's, you know, or, or, or there's a lot of people trying to replicate 2D content mm. into yeah. a realm that is 3D and 360. And, and it that's just only natural, hard. right? Because we yeah. got the same example, you know, that uh, the first uh, TV shows look like radio broadcast. <laughs> because that's what we know. That's what we know. Yeah. But it, it's, that's the thing. It's like you got to, yeah. it, it's a complete mindset, a mm -hmm. mind, uh, shift in mindset. Yeah. Even how, how do you write a script? Mm -hmm. it, it's a completely, even, even with augmented reality, there really is no format, let's say, for how do you write an augmented reality storytelling script? So right. I'll give you guys an example. Riot News, which uh, does a lot of 360, that were bought by, um, by the Huffington Post and by Oath, which used to be AOL or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah. They actually are, they are they're, they're setting up right now, they're trying to hire a whole bunch of uh, augmented reality storytelling writers. Mm -hmm. So part of the job um, process, the job interview process, is to submit AR storytelling scripts. And there's no, I mean, there's no format for this. It's literally, you've got to create something new we're all building the future here so right. that's what that's one of the exciting things for sure no absolutely so if a marketer you know he understands there is right now it's a challenge of education there is maybe a cost issue maybe cost the experience issues, yeah. is not really a well defined so let's say we have a, some brands a, with a vp of marketing or cmo that feel like mm -hmm. they, they want to they have some budget to experiment and they would like to allocate uh, some dollars to VR. So what do you see, you know, typically uh, as uh, the most common business objectives that marketers uh, could use AR or VR? Mm -hmm. um, I think from VR, it's about the experience, having them experience something different. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, Patron, uh, the tequila Patron, did an experience called The Art of Patron, which took you inside how you know how the how the tequila is is created all the way from um, the fields of the um, what's it called um, mezcal uh, uh -huh. through their hacienda through the processing all the way to your table oh, and wow. they did this through like a CG live action kind of thing it was pretty interesting um, but when their uh, the, the, one of the people in the marketing team talked about it, is about being remembered and about being you know about that experience. So if you're putting on a headset and, and you're a brand and you're trying to tell a story, it's about being remembered. It's about creating that experience for the consumer, not just, you know, um, not just uh, pushing something onto them, which I thought was a really interesting thing. Um, so it's, it's a really interesting perspective if you think about it. how do you use these tools correctly? We're right. all creating, we're all forging the future. Um, I do have to say from an augmented reality standpoint, you know, if I think if a brand, if a brand has some um, budget left over and they want to experiment, as much as I love virtual reality, I would also think that it might be interesting for them to try augmented reality mm -hmm. uh, because VR is still very hard to scale. Right. Because, yeah, because I mean, you can do some, you know, you can do it on, on Facebook or YouTube, uh, YouTube 360, what have you, but it's still hard to scale because you still have the problem of the headsets being very expensive, right. needing virtual reality PC. I mean, that's changing. There's some solutions coming down the line, mm -hmm. which obviously are very exciting. Uh, but right now, it's still very hard to scale. So, what do most people have on their phone? They have a cell, you know, on their hands, a cell yep. phone. Yeah. So, so I think you know, if you're trying to get a little bit more reach, maybe augmented reality might be um, one of the ways to go. Yeah. So, so I, go ahead, sir. No, but I was going to say, if they, like, for example, if a company does have some extra mm -hmm. um, marketing dollars, yep. I would suggest that they even set up an innovation center mm -hmm. in their office so that they're not only their creative team, but um, the people in, the, in that office, in that company can get exposed to these technologies because you don't know who's going to have a bright idea or a great idea. It could be someone, um, you know, it, it could be someone that does a certain job and says, this would be really great for showing what we do or um, right. I don't know. Exposing people to this technology, yeah, sure. I think, would be really important. 
to keep so, those to get those creative juices flowing. So yeah. So it sounds like the, this uh, stage in the game, we're mostly looking at uh, brand awareness. You know, if you look at the buying journey, you know, it's top of the funnel. Business objectives mm -hmm. like brand awareness, you know, getting it to, to the the utmost richer experience using VR or AR, with preference to AR because it has more uh, scalability from an audience size. So marketers would find that more appealing because obviously VR, as you said, it's more more stationary, more expensive. You know, probably a more suitable for events where you want to showcase on the spot uh, some experiences, but mobile AR definitely. Can, can you talk a little bit about more kind of a mid funnel or kind of even bottom mm -hmm. funnel objectives? How could you use a immersive technology like this? It's, uh, and, I, and I'm not trying to this VR because I love VR. I'm just saying like if they have some yeah, money yeah. left over and they're worried about scalability, it's probably going to have to be AR from a scalability perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That being said, I mean, some of the things I just saw at Advertising Week uh, blew my mind. So I'll give you an example. Um, one of my clients, actually, you visit, who I do some work for, uh, they just launched this virtual reality experience with Spadovsky, the crystal, uh, you know, the, the Austrian crystal company that also has a home collection. Uh -huh. um, so they brought the collection, they filmed the collection in 360, they did this beautiful tour, uh, but they partnered with MasterPass. Hmm. So MasterPass is MasterCard. And um, at Shop.org, they unveiled this experience where actually you're able to purchase within the virtual reality experience. Oh, that's fantastic. Hmm. Which is fantastic. It is truly, yeah. it solves one of the problems of like, how do you get, yeah, you can get people through the funnel. How do you qualify them? How do you actually get them to take action? So uh, within that experience, like this thing pops up and you can like purchase, let's say I want this va this, va this vase or I want this, you know, whatever it is from the, and especially, especially high ticket items um, that, you know, are only available in certain showrooms. Uh, you know, it, it, it looked, it, it was a very interesting case study um, as far as how to do it. So that's one of the things I saw that has really blown my mind from a funnel perspective, you know, getting people through the funnel to actually purchase something. We'll see what the numbers are, how many people actually purchased. I don't know that. Um, right. That was one, that was one thing. So. Now this is, you know, it reminds me, you know, a couple of years ago, remember that uh, virtual world that uh, all the major brands rushed in to create a digital presence and then he just disappeared. <laughs> Second life, yeah. Second life, exactly. So it's kind of interesting to see how we're experiencing maybe a comeback now that we have AR and VR to some extent. So let's talk about, you said that mobile AR is most likely the, the most logical entry point for a lot of brands if they want to experiment. So can you kind of describe, you know, how the end-to-end -end process look like from the moment, you know, I got approval from my CEO for <laughs> experimental budget. I'm the CMO and I want to start a mobile AR a program. So <clears throat> from that perspective, I think it's, it, you know, not because I do this, I do this for a living, but I think it's really important for um, those people in the marketing team or agencies that don't really understand um, what they can do to reach out to someone that knows what the technology can and cannot do yet. Okay. Right. Um, that's important uh, because it's um, because sometimes they'll come up with ideas and you're like, well, the, that's great, but we're not there with the technology technology yet, you know, or, or they'll create, so they'll come up with an idea and you're like, well, why don't we do it this different way and add interactivity right. or add multiplayer. So um, start with, you know, if you have someone on your team that knows AR, then awesome. If not, try to find someone that can help you figure it out how to use storytelling, how to use tools, and then move forward and craft. Um, there's going to be iterations. You know, there's going to be iterations. There's going to be, um, you know, you have to try out the triggers. Sometimes a trigger, which I, what I mean by a trigger is the image that triggers um, a certain thing to happen in augmented reality through your camera. Right. Uh, have to make sure those triggers are correct that sometimes you might plan a really cool uh, augmented reality activation but then when you get to the place the lighting's not really great and your camera sometimes has an issue figuring out so it's just a lot of things that you really need to do quality assurance for right uh, when it comes to campaign um but really what is the i think it's one of the things is what does success look like for that campaign 
yep. especially with metrics, mm -hmm. uh, just because it's so new. Like, what are the metrics? Is it downloads? Is it people that shared? Is it, you know, it, that's the thing. Um, I think that having clear metrics or what the, what success could look like for that campaign for that brand, as I think right. it's going to be really important. So it's not just like, oh, we did an activation and only 100 people saw it. Yep. Um, I think that you need to have an idea of what success would look like. Um, so. and, even, and even before going into the mm -hmm. metrics, which I I'm definitely would like to kind of probe this deeper, but mm -hmm. in terms of the actual technology, I mean, I know that uh, one of the challenges with augmented reality is that, uh, you know, up till, <laughs> I would say, recently, you would need to install a separate app uh, in your device in order to consume augmented reality. And maybe now with iOS 11, you know, with the Apple Arcade, you know, we started seeing some examples. I just saw the other day that IKEA started a, yeah. a very a first integration with Arcade. But can you talk a little bit about the technology barriers? How to, you can you can minimize the barriers of entry, so you can maximize the reach of your audience? That's a really great question, and I'm gonna have honest answer honestly, meaning because I've got about. 12 to 15 AR apps on my phone right now. Yep. Uh, am I using them every day? No, not really. <laughs> uh, that's why I think for augmented reality to really take off and to really become that next um, computing platform or whatever we want to call it, it has to solve two. It has to solve problems. Right. So it's got to use utility. It's got to bring utility. Yep. And it's got to bring context. Because my biggest thing is that augmented reality, mixed reality, um, are going to contextualize our reality. Mm. That, that's how I frame it. It's going to contextualize a consumer's reality. And by what I mean by this, it's going to um, help us understand certain things better that are abstract. It's going to um, help us order something at a restaurant in a healthier way, if that's what we're looking to do. Mm -hmm. It's going to help us connect with certain people that we would have never connected with right. at an event, for example. Um, so the, the easiest way to show a little bit of what I mean. So during Hurricane Irma, a lot mm -hmm. of us in Florida obviously were very affected. Yep. Um, the Weather Channel was using augmented reality in their in their in, you know the shows. Mm -hmm. And um, instead of someone in, behind a desk telling me there's going to be you know ten inches of rain, mm -hmm. they actually had graphics uh, mm -hmm. in augmented reality. They used the Hololens for this uh, that showed you what it would look like at five inches, what it would look like at 10 inches, what happens at 15 inches. And I think that bringing that, um, showing people what that really looks like yep. or what that could really like that, that context, that contextualizing things mm -hmm. was extremely helpful. Right. I, I think from a visual, from a visual storytelling standpoint. Um, and I think that that's how augmented reality can be extremely powerful if it brings utility and context. And, and I, I keep, I keep pre preaching about this. It's about utility and context until, until yep. we don't have those two things really solidified and augmented. Um, it's, it's, it's still going to be a little gimmicky. So. No, absolutely. I think you hit on a very important uh, point, uh, especially with the context uh, com component, because I think that you know, when you look at the storytelling uh, arc, you know you definitely want to have a, a, as part of your story, you, you want to show your audience how would life would look like mm -hmm. in a case of success, or yeah. how they would look like in terms of failure, which is uh, you know kind of mm -hmm. staging the high stakes. So I think this is really augmented reality from that perspective. You know, the ability to visualize you know, different outcomes uh, for your buyer's journey or your customer challenges opens up a, a really fascinating uh, opportunities for marketers because this is something that is not dependent on time, space. It's not, uh, you don't have to build a new construction. It's all digital. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the beauty that it adds on to a physical, a uh, real life experience. And even the implications that it has beyond marketing, because I mean, obviously I'm in the marketing side of things, but the future of work, yep. the future of training, the future of disaster preparedness. I mean, yep. this technology has massive implications for the betterment of society. And Absolutely. I think that, you know, that's where I think a lot of times things are lost. Um, there's something in technology that we call Amara's Law. I don't know yep. if you've ever heard of it. Okay, so for those people that don't know, it's basically that we the, we overhype 
the next five years, let's say, but we yeah. underhype the next 10. So yeah. I think that that's really important uh, for, to realize, okay, yes, this is, we're living a hype, this is a hype cycle. Uh, we're all in on VR and AR like myself. But in reality, I'm trying to think about it from the long-term perspective of the impact that this will have on on our on you know on us moving forward as a society. So wow. very interesting. So maybe I should even write an article about that for for yeah. <laughs> for yeah, the blog. Love <laughs> Absolutely, we'd love to have your contribution every time. Uh, so, so when you think about mobile AR, just to kind of close this subject, yeah. do you see like a you know dominant a categories of use cases you know i know that facebook when they presented their ar they talked about uh, one category being a, a information displays in retail mm -hmm. then they talk about enhancements you know those uh, nice uh, everything that you see that snapchat came up with the first yeah. they, so they kind of replicate that but do you see these common categories in ar definitely i mean definitely there's it's there's so many categories it can impact everything from uh, that's why I that's why I said contextualizing utility in context because that's that kind of is really broad right. in a sense um, you know and then with augmented reality there's a discussion on if VR and AR are the end of the pre-roll in the banner ads and that's a really right. interesting conversation to have I'm like well maybe it's not necessarily the end of it it's a it's gonna be something different you yeah. know we're all kind of opting out of the ads or opting out of you know banners or pop-ups or what have you or in uh -huh. some way so what is this going to turn into uh in that vr and air world so interesting so it's wow. a really interesting conversation and one of the things i always say with uh with a virtual reality experience uh product placement for example in a vr experience cannot be done blatantly because yeah. it's so incredibly like it, it, it's just in your face and people don't like getting being sold to Yep. So you gotta you gotta do it from a different perspective if you're doing product placement in VR. Um, so yeah, that's just some of the things that's that you know that have come through my mind. So yeah, I used to work in the product placement uh, industry mm -hmm. years ago in uh, in Hollywood. So I definitely understand how this uh, <laughs> the dynamics of integrating brands into entertainment content or branded content. So. Yeah, so, so going back to, now that we get uh, some sense of uh, the process, uh, you, you kind of uh, lightly touched on the, uh, how you do you measure, measure success? So, so if we take the example of AR, mobile AR and, and VR, can you give us just what are the KPIs, well, what we should look for? It, that, it's the wild, wild west. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. It really is the wild, wild west because it depends if you're doing mobile. If you're doing a HoloLens campaign, it's really going to depend a lot of things. I mean, at least with VR, there's certain, um, like there's heat maps and there's certain things you can do in VR. There's actually a company I'm called. Spent. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> there's a company called Retinad, uh, which I spoke to at Advertising Week, and they're doing mm -hmm. a lot of stuff on the metric side of things for 360 and VR, which I thought was interesting. Uh, from an AR perspective, um, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's a little bit out there, especially because you could be doing a campaign, like I said, for the HoloLens. You could be doing a campaign for mobile. Right. You could be doing a campaign for the Mira headset, which is the, the new one where you put your phone in. You could be doing, you know, how are we going to measure success in the new uh, Lenovo augmented realities Star Wars one? Is it, you know, is it how many times someone plays? Is it, yep. you know, I think, it, I think it'll be interesting to see what the metrics are. That's why I think it's important for marketers when they sit down with a client or an agency or a brand mm -hmm. to figure out what do you want to accomplish at the end and what does success look like for, for this brand in this specific campaign. So it um, sounds like that it's, a, it's still a wild west and we're still kind of writing the rules as we go. Yeah. And you can borrow some of the metrics that are available in digital and marketing. But we're, we're going to create our own metrics. Trust yeah. me, like we are going to create our own metrics because it's a completely yeah. different discipline. So, Absolutely. so yeah. yeah. So there's no IAB <laughs> scorecard yet. <laughs> not yet, not yet. There should be ethics though. I am a big proponent of best practices and ethics when it comes to these new technologies. Right. Um, because you will have a lot of things that will pop up. I mean, I'm, I can't really discuss some of these, yep. uh, but there's certain things that are already popping up that you're like, how do you manage something like this, uh, when, you know, let's say something pops up in augmented reality mm -hmm. that 
is is fake or is you know masking a product with another product brand or right. I mean, so many so many things that can pop up in um literally uh, in, in augmented reality so cool so you know you've been active in the space uh, for a while and uh, you know you probably saw a ton of different uh, examples of campaigns and things that uh, worked and did not work what would you say you know maybe one or two examples that for you kind of represent you know the state of art that's how it should be done for AR that's how it should be done for VR so I'll tell you two things. I'll talk about one of the campaigns I was involved in called Bee Feeder XO, which we did at Future Lighthouse. It was actually nominated for a Tribeca X. And um, the Tribeca X is an award given by the Tribeca Film Festival that awards uh, the intersection of storytelling, advertising, and, uh, and, and cinematography, let's say. Yep. It's kind of like an all in a very inclusive, uh, amazing um, award. It, basically, this experience was a virtual reality experience taking you inside the brain of a very famous chef in Spain. It was uh, sponsored by Beefeater, which is a gin brand. Mm -hmm. And instead of like saying, drink Beefeater and make this cocktail, it was more like, how does this chef envision uh, certain certain cities? So there was kind of his interpretation. He's very eclectic, of course. Mm -hmm. So his interpretation of what London is and what Venice is and what Bangkok right. is and what Mumbai is. So it was, it was going inside his brain, going on these very trippy, um, eccentric places in his mind uh -huh. and yes there's a brand there's things that says beef eater in one of them uh, but it wasn't really pushing the gin and I think that that was one of the things that made it successful um, from that perspective it was like it was fun and there was kind of a you know it was a, an arc like you said it was like a storytelling you everyone ended up like no matter what your journey was mm -hmm. everyone ended up in London in a party inside Big Ben <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it was it was uh, quite successful. Uh, they the way they did to scale it, let's say, uh, other than um, you know, other than you know, like people downloading something on their phone, uh, uh -huh. they they did a tour through malls, through I certain see. malls in Spain where they had the the, the chairs that you could go around mm -hmm. and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that kind of that's one way that they got more and more people to experience it. Um, so and they, they did a whole, and it was just not just a campaign. It was VR. It was a, what they call transmedia. I know we don't use that a lot in the U.S., oh, yeah. or but it's a transmedia campaign where you're using all these different elements and kind of like pushing this. Oh, forward, that's cool. So. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think, you know, especially with augmented reality, the ability to visualize uh, different outcomes uh, mm -hmm. to your storyline. It, it, it's really fantastic because it's something that uh, I know it's been done a, to some extent in theater when you think about it with the particip participatory uh, theater where you can take it uh, <laughs> whatever direction. So, yeah, so this is uh, another expression of this uh, theme, I guess. I'm a huge fan of immersive theater. I mean, yeah. Sleep No More changed my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sleep No More, then she fell. I mean, I'm always looking for these amazing experiences where it's literally like going into vr the way uh -huh. i tell people is like if you if you don't understand virtual reality go to one of these and you'll totally understand it um yeah, because sure. it's, what they're doing is this immersive theater where you're you know and no matter how many times you go it's always gonna be a different story and that goes in line with the idea of reactive content mm -hmm. um which i know you know I, there's 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 companies working on creating actual reactive content. In, in some ways, shapes or form, this is kind of that future of, of entertainment. And, um, you know, choose your own story, whatever you want to call it, but it's that reactive content that's even more personalized. So it's incredibly impactful. And even if you look at, at something like Disney, so Disney's launching, they're going to have their Star Wars park. Mm -hmm. And within the park, they're going to have a hotel which is going to be a fully immersive experience. Right. And by that, I mean that when you go in, you check in and you're a character and you live that character however long your stay is. Mm -hmm. okay? um, very interesting because you're doing, you're, you're kind of like doing this thing where you're fully immersed in this park and you like take someone else's identity and it's just really fun. Um, I'm actually going to do an experience like that in New York uh -huh. called The Path of Beatrice, uh, where it's all done by this company called, that has the, it's called Paradiso. 
And um, basically, it's a three day, it's a three or four day experience. Um, and, and you literally are trying to like solve these like, it's just a, a mind blowing. I, ha I can't tell you what it is because I haven't done sure. it yet. But yep. I know that you, they send you to different places, like they text you. You have to meet a stranger at a restaurant. You have to do all these things. Oh wow! And um, I'm but that's going to be it. VR. I'm, that's going to be VR or AR. No, it's real. It's real. It's like real immersive, oh. like real people. Oh, like, oh, real people. Oh, I see. Got it. <laughs> real people. I mean, you got to pay for it, but. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's trippy. I mean, I can't wait to do it and kind of experience that because it's kind of living that VR from from the outside Absolutely. kind of thing. So. Yeah, and that's what we keep saying about stories. You know, they allow you know your audience to kind of vicariously live uh, the mm -hmm. life of the, the experiences of the hero uh, through the story. So obviously, with technology, VR and AR are the new enablers uh, to allow you to experience uh, whatever the protagonist is seeing uh, mm -hmm. and get a more uh, impact on the story. Well, you become part of the story. You become the protagonist or, or you become whatever it is that you are within the story. But that agency that you are given when you're going into these experiences is mm -hmm. amazing. And once they solve the problem of reactive content, it's even more personalized. Yep. So um, what's coming is a revolution. I mean, it, it, as far as content goes, it's a true revolution. Um, I think so, I, I mean, I'm, ex the... I'm excited about the future. Yeah, no, I think, you know... Uh, Talking about storytelling and uh, immersive uh, technology, I think probably the next step, and I'm kind of curious uh, what you think, you know, it's really about uh, playing the role of choreography where you give uh, an actual role for your audience. So it's not just like the, let me give you a hand and we're gonna walk through the story that I created for you. No, I'm gonna give you a specific role so you have an actual protagonist role in this story mm -hmm. that's going to interact with the other people in the story. So it's not just you as a passive uh, kind of almost like a Epcot Center, you know, mm -hmm. you're sitting on this little, <laughs> a, you know, a wagon and just going through the exhibit and seeing stuff. No, you actually part, you can actually influence the, uh, the plot line. Well, I think it'll come down, it'll eventually come down to when we get home, we, you know, people want to unwind and sometimes what are they, sometimes they just want to watch TV on a flat yeah. screen. They'll turn on, let's, I'll give you an example, like a movie like Mr. and Mrs. Smith, they'll watch that. But let's yeah. say they want something else. They yeah. are going to be able to put on a headset, uh, sit next to their wife or husband and go into a movie like Mr. and Mrs. Smith and live that movie from Angelina Jol's, uh, Jolie's perspective or Brad Pitt's perspective. So exactly. it'll come down to that. Do you want to be an active participant of your entertainment or do you want to just kind of like be more of absurd, absurd from, a, from a further out perspective? So, um, so yeah, I think what's coming is really interesting. It's going to be really interesting from that perspective. And, and even like I said, the concept that the, the, the story that you're going into, especially in VR is alive. And I mean, I know it sounds weird, but with AI, you know, reactive content it, it, in some way, the story is going to be alive. Yeah. So, um, it that is like, powerful. Sounds, I mean, it, it sounds like even, you know, now that you describe it this way, think about, you know, going to a salad bar and you look up at the menu and you see, do you have your preset salads options? Or create your mm -hmm. own, and that's or exactly create your own, exactly. So some people will be more creative that they don't want to choose, you know, the the Greek salad, which is they have a mm -hmm. preset expectation of what they're gonna it's gonna be like. They're gonna be want to be kind of create and be in fluid motion of discovery. So yeah, and you can change it up. Like sometimes you want the Greek salad, sometimes you want to go crazy and do something exactly. else. So. <laughs> So I think it'll be really interesting, I think, uh, from that Absolutely. personalization of entertainment and content. So, Yeah, so maybe kind of in closing, maybe can you give our audience some uh, general two or three tips, you know, from your experience being active in the space, you know, what are the two or three things they could keep in mind? Try to understand the technology as much as you can. Um, mm -hmm. Not everyone has the technical skills that they to develop, yep. um, but try to understand the technology and what goes behind it. Um, stay updated, you know, learn, educate yourself. I think that's one of them. And one of my things is like, you cannot talk about these technologies unless you're spending time in a headset or, you know, or using AR. Like that's one of the things. Like I'm an active consumer of these things. I, you know, that, that's one of the things that's like, 
you got to better be, <laughs> you better be spending time on the headset or better be, you know, using AR to really understand what's going on. And I pay a lot of attention yeah. when I'm out there, I'm paying a lot of attention to what I'm seeing. And I'm like, wow, they just augmented my kid's menu at Denny's or yeah. I, I, you know, that's something and you've probably seen this on my Facebook. I keep my eye out for everything. Like I was in New York and there's an, you know, there's a, 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 in the, the cab, there's this little thing with a ticker on the bottom. It's virtual reality and art collide at blah, blah, blah museum. And I just, it keeps, I keep seeing it pop up everywhere. I was at Publix yesterday and all of a sudden I turn a corner. They're selling virtual reality headsets. I go to um, CVS and they're selling 360 virtual reality gift, uh, greeting cards. So just keep your eyes out, you know, keep your eyes out because this is coming. Yeah, it's absolutely. not, this is not 3D television. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Now that, that's so true. Yeah. So I understand also that you are uh, about to launch, uh, to publish a new book, VR Marketing. Maybe you can talk uh, just lightly about that and also how can people uh, contact you? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So basically, it's um, we're writing a uh, my my co-author myself, my co-author is Samantha Wolf. We're writing a book on virtual reality and augmented reality marketing. So it's um, you know we want to get a keep we want to give people actionable items. We want to educate people that want it to be an educational resource for them. Uh, we're going to have plenty of information in there uh, for people to uh, to learn what's going on, to understand what's going on, and give them you know uh, history, but also give them ideas on how to use it in the future. So the book's going to come out um, at the end of October, beginning of November. We're working yep. on that right now, and it's going to be on. Um, it's going to be available on Amazon or in you know our, our either Kindle version or printed version. Depends what people want. And we're just really excited to be able to bring the really what is the first in some way, shape, or form virtual reality, augmented reality marketing uh, toolkit or uh, book out there. Yeah. So. Uh, we're working really hard on finishing it up right now. Um, it looks like we'll be launching the book around the time of the uh, Digital Marketing World Forum in New York. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited about that. Oh, so yeah, if you, follow, if you go to my website, you can, find, you can get notified when the book comes out. And uh, people that get notified before will get a discount, a very good discount on the book. So. Cool. And how can people uh, contact you if they have any questions or would like to engage? Yes. Um, go to kathyhackle.com. So C-A-T-H-Y-H-A-C-K-L.com. Or follow me on, you know, follow me on Twitter. Tweet at me. I'm pretty good about answering questions. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, yeah. Anywhere. Any of those. I'm very active on social, as you know. So. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Kathy, for a fascinating uh, chat today about uh, the brave new world of AR and VR. And we're going to, uh, obviously this show is recorded uh, both mm -hmm. in video and also is going to be syndicated on our uh, Visual Storytelling Today podcast. So you can uh, consume the content from there. Cool. So thank you so much, Kathy. You know, that was a really uh, fantastic uh, conversation. And I'm sure uh, my, the audience, uh, both in, uh, today and in the future, that's uh, actually going to watch this or... Uh, listen to our podcast we'll uh, get a lot of uh, uh, valuable information so thank you for that and i hope to see you in our next show of visual storytelling today so until next time don't keep your story waiting thank you so much bye-bye thank you visual storytelling today is recorded in miami florida the show is published exclusively by visual storytelling institute Learn more at visualstorytell.com. You can subscribe to this podcast on the iTunes Store. Until next time, don't let your big story wait to be told.